let's go to the pediatric nutrition. See, nutrition is basically a human need for a healthy life. So adequate nutrition during infancy and early childhood is very important to that so that they have optimum growth, development, and they make sure that it they uh, develop to their fullest potential. And it's very important for maintenance of daily body functions, daily living. Nutrition plays a very important role. There's something known as first thousand days. Okay. First thousand days is nothing but before preconception until the child is two years of age, we call it as the first thousand days. That is the nine months of pregnancy that I was speaking all this time. Plus, once the child is born from that time up to the child turns two years, it's 365 plus 365 plus 270 during pregnancy. So all of this together is thousand days because this is a unique window to shape long-term health. As I already told you, this is a fundamental phase where if nutrition is very, very good at this time, the child will have a very good future. And there are a lot of evidence and a lot of research to support that the child will not have much of diseases or much of non-communicable diseases or risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, heart attacks. Everything will be reduced if nutrition is imparted in the first thousand days. So, as I already told you, nutrition is essential for optimum growth and development. The first thousand days is very critical for a good and mental health because uh, from the first, from the child is born and up to two years of age, the maximum brain growth will take place and malnutrition can affect the physical and can cause intellectual stunting during this period, which is why it's very important that nutrition during infancy is equally important as pregnant and lactating mother as well. So growth is the best global indicator of the child's well-being. So adequate food intake is essential for optimum growth and development. The children under two years are very much vulnerable to poor nutrition because growth during this period is higher than any other period. And if there is malnutrition, it can cause growth retardation as well. So there are a lot of studies to say that the, when there is a poor nutrition during this phase, it can have uh, that mortality in children uh, and units under five years in the world. And there are a lot of studies to say that undernutrition is associated with 45% of child death by the WHO in 2021. And globally in 2020, they found that 149 million children were under five years were estimated to be stunted. 45 million of children were estimated to be wasted and 13.0 million children were overweight or obese. So wastage is nothing but when the child is uh, having less uh, weight for the height. Stunted is basically when the child is shorter and we call it as overweight or obese when the child's BMI is greater than what it is recommended. And also infants ha having a, a low birth weight are at high risk of mortality and mor morbidity during the first two years after life, especially after six months of age, which is why I was stressing all this time. So undernutrition plays a very important role because if the child is undernourished, they are their immune, they are they are very much uh, they have a very less immune, and there are chances of they getting infected, but it's very, very high. So once there is an infectious disease for the child, there will be a greater energy needs, but the child will not. It will not be able to eat. So again, it's like a vicious cycle, undernutrition and infectious diseases. So both are like, goes in par. It's like vice versa. When there is undernutrition, it can cause infectious disease. When there is infectious disease, it can also cause undernutrition. So which is why nutrition is very, very important as very crucial during this period. So again, as I already told you, it plays a very important role in immune and cognitive functions because they develop early. So when there is some uh, inadequate nutrition in the early years, the child will have a developmental delay. They'll be developed, I mean, delayed motor and cognitive skills. There'll be even behavioral problems and the child will also have learning difficulties and they will not have a good educational achievement as well, which is what, which is why I've been stressing all this time. So we're gonna see some of the uh, important uh, points in pediatric nutrition. 
the first thing one you'll have to keep in mind is you'll have to feed the child within one hour of birth in case of a normal vaginal delivery that is a normal delivery in case of cesarean or an lses that is cesarean section the child will have to initiate breastfeeding within four hours of birth please remember breastfeeding is always the best uh is the always the best milk for the babies up to six months of age and there is no other milk that can replace breastfeeding so for the first six months breastfeeding should be more than sufficient and there is no need to give any water or anything apart from breastfeeding so you have to remember this point and it's very important that the mothers should have a skin to skin contact like how we call it as the gangro mother care it's very important so the more the skin to skin contact is there what happens is there ensures a bonding between the mother and the child and you see there is a better supply of breast milk and the mothers can actually feel that kid and the child will also feel the warmth of the mother's skin so it plays a very important role for a better bonding of the mother and the parent it's very important to remember that you will have to feed the child every two hours once which is why i have given here apart from that as i already told you exclusive breastfeeding that is for the first six months you will have to only breastfeed the child exclusive breastfeeding in the sense no need of any water up to six months of age in case if the mothers do not have an adequate breast milk or if it's insufficient you can top up with infant formulas or the formula feeds but it's only given when it is not sufficient or not adequate you cannot formula feed just because you want to okay again i'm telling you breast milk is always the best milk you cannot replace it with any other milk only if it's less you can top up it in case if the mothers are not able to breastfeed they can also look for donor human milk banks There's a lot of milk banks is available in the city uh, i think most of the government hospitals can also provide it for free in case you can opt for that i mean the, if you know any mothers who are breastfeeding and i mean who are supposed to breastfeed and they are not able to get they can obviously go to the milk bank and get the breast milk in case if they're not having that facility then maybe they can opt for formula feed so we'll just see some of the advantages of breastfeeding breastfeeding as i already told you it gives it has all the perfect nutrients it's easily digested it's efficiently used it protects against infection and it protects against long term non communicable diseases breastfeeding it helps in bonding and the development helps delay a new pregnancy uh it also protects the mother's health and it's very important it's costless i mean it does not cost anything so when you compare it to an artificial feeding or a formula feeding it costs very very less so it's not expensive so breast milk it helps in protection against infection basically even if the mother is uh, having fever or cold or anything the mother can definitely breastfeed because the white blood cells in the mother's body will make antibodies for in her body to protect her whereas those antibodies what happen i mean those white cells can also go to the breast and make antibodies there these antibodies what happens is it gets secreted in the milk to protect the baby so which is why it also protects against infection so colostrum is very very important colostrum is basically the first milk that you get in the breast milk so it is uh, yellowish in nature the color it has it is antibiot it is antibody rich it has lot of white cells it helps in uh, prevention of jaundice it helps the uh, colostrum helps the baby pass the first stools we call it as the meconium it is uh, it helps in preventing high disease reduces infection it has a lot of uh, good factors which is why it's important to breastfeed as soon as the child is born so best is one hour after the child is born in case of normal vaginal delivery four hours in case of cesarean inception so it's very important that the mothers or the caregivers will have to poke the child before and after feeding for a good supply and hygiene and sanitization is very very important so before and after breastfeeding the mother will have to take care you should wash the hands and use the do the basic sanitation and if they're using any utensils or even if they're express expressively breastfeeding the child then they'll have to you know uh, sterilize the bottles or whatever the materials that they use for the baby and uh, you know preparing the food and washing again hygiene plays an important role and please remember 
you should not add honey to the child's diet up to two years of age because it causes in infant botulism and there should be no addition of sugar for the child up to one year of age also no addition of salt up to one year of age according to the indian academy of pediatrics because the kidneys are not very much developed during the the first one year so it is very good it's, i mean it is advisable to add sugar and salt to the child's diet after one year of age because adding sugar will cause cavity and adding salt in that uh, child's diet can cause a stress to the kidneys definitely no biscuits to the child's diet up to one year of age and there is no need to add any spicy foods to the child's diet up to one year and definitely a no no to cow's milk cow's milk is not uh, adequate or not appropriate for the infants okay so definitely no uh, giving cow's milk to babies less than one year of age because if you see uh, these are the nutrients that's present in human milk cow milk and goat milk if you just see the comparison uh, the protein content in human milk is basically adequate and appropriate for the child to digest whereas in goat and uh, cow milk they have a higher protein so what happens when you give a higher protein the child might not digest properly the child might also develop some signs and they might even be allergic so that is why it is important not to give cow's milk or any other animal milk to the child i mean up to one year of age after one year you can start with cow's milk or goat's milk or whatever is adequate and this is something these are the, just the protein to understand why human milk should be given human milk will contain uh, anti infective proteins and it contains only 35% of casein which is easy to digest whereas cow's milk it contains 80% of caffein which is very very difficult to digest and they have a very less whey protein which is why it is not adequate for the child to digest so iron is very important nutrient as i already told you human milk will contain at least uh, i mean uh, will absorb 50% of the iron whereas in cow's milk there's only 10% of iron that is been absorbed so uh, babies who are under cow's milk their chances of them developing anemia as well so it is very important to initiate complementary feeds once the child attains 6 months of age complementary food should be started plus giving breast milk to the diet as well apart from that the consistency is very important uh, you should give uh, the food in the correct consistency it should not be too thin not too thick it should be just right so it's just an example of how the food should be so this is just to understand the consistency i have given you a image and the stomach size will also vary as the infant grows so when they six months they may take like one to two spoons when they are eight months they take a higher requirement and as the infant i mean the child grows they take an uh, they have an increased stomach size they they can consume a higher amount of food so the quantity is, as i already told you at 6 months 2 to 3 spoons per meal and 2 to 3 to 3 times a day they can be consumed from 6 to 9 months of age maybe half a bowl and 9 to 12 months to 3/4 of a bowl and 1 to 2 year maybe one bowl per meal can be consumed so food so we think what foods can be given for pediatrics so basically you can uh, select from any of the food from like staple cereals lentils uh, you can also give seasonal fruits green leafy vegetables a uh, dairy products uh, like milk curd see milk cow's milk no after one year you can try giving curd butter for the child for the kids and you can also add some ghee or oil in the food to make it calorie dense as well so you can develop you can actually select each uh, one nutrient from each of the food group so as i already told you what are the foods that can be given from 0 to 9 months is breast milk or formula milk iron rich fortified cereals like rice wheat ragi can be given apart from that you can also give uh, strained uh, or peeled uh, fruits like banana apple and etc and uh, talking about vegetables you can give well cooked carrot potato sweet potato cauliflower spinach bottle gourd in a very pureed form you can also give diluted fruit juices without addition of sugar like uh, orange sweet lime etc and you can also give small amount of gourd because gourd is a probiotic which helps in in maintaining the good gut health for the kids from 9 months you can start giving the food from mashed to soft food consistency and it is not necessary to be blended you can give mixed cereals and you can initiate giving finger foods for the child because they start the tooth will start erupting and they would uh, they would want you know something to bite so you can give finger foods and you can also cut fruits or vegetables into cubes or stripes 
You can also give some soft cooked vegetables like peas or carrots for them to bite. From 12 months, you can actually initiate family foods without spices. So you, then you can introduce dairy or cow milk slowly in the child's diet. So it's very important that you have to give initiate timely, adequate, appropriate, and safe food. These are some of the things that you'll have to remember uh, like to ensure an optimal nutrition during complementary feeding. And another important thing to uh, end up with here is you have to make sure that all the infants and children, they should have proper vaccination. Uh, this is just a vaccination schedule according to the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. You can get it anywhere. You can also browse the internet to get what are the vaccines that's available. I have just given here to understand at what age, what are the vaccines that should be given. So this is again, uh, like you, there are vaccines up to you know 16 years of vaccines are there for the children. And see, this is very, again, to summarize, a baby with low birth weight will have a growth failure because of that. Uh, the child in adolescent, there'll be low weight for height. Again, the mothers will have an early pregnancy. It's like a vicious cycle. So conclusion, take home messages is, folic acid supplementation is very important in the preconception period, that is before pregnancy, because it reduces the new, uh, neural tumor uh, diseases by 70%. So it's very important that preconception care should be very important and prenatal counseling is also very, very essential. So it's very important that pregnancy will increase the nutrition requirement of the women. So you should understand that there is an increased requirement for a mother to have a healthy diet in the long term. And having a good healthy body weight is very important at the beginning of pregnancy and gestation weight and uh, uh, and it's very important that a uh, good healthy diet pattern during the preconceptional period will help reducing the risk of maternal and infant complications as well as the lifetime consequences. And talking about for pediatric nutrition, infant and child health feeding is the key to improve child survival and it promotes healthy growth and development for the kids. And correct feeding in the first two years is very important because it reduces morbidity, mortality and reduces risk of chronic diseases during the lifespan and it helps in promoting a healthy mental and physical development for the babies.